Hello everybody, uh, let's talk about the games I watched today and I also want to do a quick round on Germany, England, a little bit of France and we'll talk about Spain and uh, Italy tomorrow. I just saw uh, Barcelona got the lead but I want to see a little bit more that we'll talk probably in the car or later and for Italy since there are two games tomorrow I think by Tuesday we'll talk really about Italy. Um, but yeah, games that I watched, uh, it started off and I'm wearing Fiorentina with Fiorentina against Sampdoria. I was really now torn, shall I use Fiorentina or shall I use Sampdoria, which is right here uh, to wear. Um, given that I like that I was a little bit more Fiorentina in this game, um, made the choice easier, but I was actually thinking of making a weird video where in one, uh, when I talk about Fiorentina, I'm wearing the Fiorentina shirt and then I talk about uh, Sampdoria, I'm wearing the Sampdoria shirt, but that would have been uh, too weird and honestly too much work. I actually, it's kind of late. I should, I should already be sleeping uh, too, to be honest. But yeah, uh, that was a great game to watch. Absolutely fun uh, to see Fiorentina dominated the first 15 minutes or so and had a f really a few clear chances. It seemed only a matter of time until they uh, get the breakthrough, which they actually got later than they uh, wanted through Muriel, who is uh, coming in from Sevilla. Uh, of course, he played for Sampdoria before uh, and played his first game for Fiorentina and with a really, really nice move in, 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 in into the box, very swift moving, uh, put it into the net. It was not a hard shot, but it went in. Um, and it was kind of a really tense game, which is always fun to watch. There were many yellow cards. I'm just looking here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten yellow cards. So really, really many, many cards, uh, meaning on one side maybe the referee, but on, on, on the other side there was really a lot at stake uh, for both teams. Uh, it was a game where you can at least put the other one a little bit behind. Sampdoria um, was on 29 points, Fiorentina on 26 points, you know, three points. Uh, you kind of want to get into these European spots. Uh, as, as we see, Sampdoria had a slightly better season so far. So far. But I always say Fiorentina is a fun to watch, really fun to watch. They are a really good team. So going back uh, to the game, Muriel puts them ahead and then it kind of unravels for Sampdoria uh, with the yellow card. Edmilson Fernandez got a yellow card uh, in the 30, uh, in the 14th and then he gets a well-deserved second yellow card in the 39th, yellow, red, walks off the field. And just a few minutes later, um, uh, Sampdoria gets a free kick in a nice position and Ramirez hammers it. No, no, not hammers. It was actually quite a nice curl into on the into the corner of the goal. Bang, bang, in. Um, makes it 1-1. One, one. Really nice free kick. I mean, I've been saying at the Asian Cup there are many free free kicks and all of them look at first nice, but then when you look at position of goalkeeper, no one could have saved it. This was a really great free kick. This was messy like absolutely messy like what Ramirez did here. And then the second half, I mean first half was clearly more for Fiorentina, uh, but the red card kind of changed the pace there and the second half I had the feeling that Sampdoria uh, really dominated proceedings and tried to get something going with Fiorentina, making the necessary adjustments, uh, taking an offensive guy out. Uh, let's see uh, how, yeah, Simeone came out and Dabo came in, so kind of making the necessary adjustment um, and still have a compact team and just having the strikers Muriel and Chiesa as a, a connector there. But yeah, Sampdoria made the, uh, made the game but couldn't find a breakthrough and Fiorentina was very uh, dangerous on the counter-attack and exactly such a counter-attack um, went in their favor with Muriel scoring his second uh, goal in his first game for Fiorentina. I mean, what a dream debut uh, that is. Again, it was uh, nicely assisted by Chiesa and then he takes a sprint. Chiesa uh, runs right with him, but as soon as he enters the box, it was clear that it uh, was Muriel's uh, to take and he took it nicely. Made it 2-1 and I thought, hmm, the far as the game has been going, there was not much going for some Sampdoria. 
they might as well win this game. Um, <laughs> little did I know for what the ride I, I was in. Um, because Vitor Hugo handles the ball in the box in the 80th minute very, very badly. I mean, if you look at the replay, he stretches out the hand and it goes and puts it right on the on, on the ball. Really, really bad move. And so uh, Cagliarella does what Cagliarella does. Uh, hammers it in straight into the uh, straight into the net, um, right on the crossbar in the middle. Uh, and that uh, my wife was saying, "Oh, this is an interesting game. Many yellow cards, uh, kind, kind, kind of." And, and she said, "Yeah." She also called it that the game is not over yet. She 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 was actually quite. Uh, I had a feeling she was sometimes better informed about that game than I was. I, I, I was way too absorbed uh, in stupid things. She picks up the details and she was watching this one. Um, and I told her, Cagliarella is a really good player and he showed all his class just five minutes later. Um, Gabbiadina, who came in, uh, also making his first game uh, for Sampdoria from Southampton. He's between two defenders, sneaks past them, and then basically falling, puts it into the net. An absolute striker's goal. Wonderful goal, making it 3-2 uh, for some Santander. And they look like they are the winners because, I mean, Fiorentina is a uh, um, man down. They squandered the lead. They look down and out. Of course, they keep on trying, and they get one last chance with a free kick. And if Ekdal... Who, by the way, there was he was a, there was a little commotion, and I think he got a yellow card. I think it was after one of the goals from Cagliarella. And even a Swede can do these hand gestures already. I mean, if you go to Italy, you quickly learn to talk with your hands. Anyway, uh, the ball comes in. Ekdal touches it with his head, and that's why Petella was not offside, and he is at the uh, far post. Puts it in, captain scores. He did not have the. He had a special captain's arm armband. I'm sure there will be a fine for him. Makes it 3 3, and it was a great game. Absolutely great game. Uh, the result probably helped neither one of the teams, but it was a great game game to watch. And maybe, you know, if you're Fiorentina, uh, you can take away a lot from this game. Uh, a lot of positive energy, I think. The game ended. Quick look, what shall I watch? I went straight for um, Fulham against Tottenham. I saw, by the way, in the meantime, that uh, Manchester City I didn't see any goals yet, but Manchester City beat um, Huddersfield away 3 0. So they're again within four points of Liverpool. The goals were scored by Danilo in the 18th, Surrey in the 54th, and Sunday in the 56th. So um, at halftime, you know, I saw um, the end of the first half of that a little bit. So. Um, Decide okay, the Fiorentina game will not go, uh, but it was mostly city dominant. And when I went after halftime of the Fiorentina game, it was 3 0, it was kind of mad. I don't want to watch this anymore. So, yeah, uh, that ended 3 0. The Fulham Tottenham game was an equally interesting game, I gotta say. Um, maybe not as many goals, but Fulham, although Tottenham playing uh, for the first time I saw them play in the dark blue jerseys. Um, I saw them, you know, the first time playing in the dark blue jerseys, and I saw them more um, dominant in a way in that game. Uh, but Fulham had the better chances, and quite some of these. And with Rian Baba and Mitrovic on the front, they really have a nice attack force. And it gives me some hope that Fulham might make something. Um, they took the lead through Llorente, a horrible on goal. Llorente looks like a foreign object in the Tottenham uh, li lineup. I mean, now that Kane is injured, he probably has. They have to get something going because, uh, and may maybe he will f get a little bit into the squad. But um, didn't look well in this own goal. Uh, you could see it in, in, in his expression. He didn't know what to do there. But at that moment, it was actually deserved for Fulham, and Fulham could have gotten a second. They actually got a second. Was ruled rightly or offside by Mitrovic. Uh, and Mitrovic again didn't get a penalty when he was pulled down. Um, I don't know what is what, what, what's it with him, but yeah, at the half, I think Fulham had a deserved one nil lead, and Tottenham was lucky to not be down by two nil. But right after the half, Tottenham uh, dominated the game. 
really dominated now and got chances and got the goal. I mean, I just switched. Uh, I watched uh, in the break, I watched the end of Villarreal against Athletic Bilbao, which ended 1-1. Didn't see the goals, but there was a very weird VAR situation. Long time. So I didn't see the first five minutes and right when I flipped over Dele Alli, scored the equalizer. And then it was pretty much all Tottenham at Fulham hang, hung on. And just when you thought they managed the 1-1, Cross in, I think it was again Dele Alli, but I'm not sure. Nah, in Kudu it was. Um, got it in, Winks heads it into the net, uh, and Tottenham runs, big, uh, gets the winner. 2-1. Uh, when you saw the reaction of Ranieri, I, it was devastating to him. I mean, he was almost crying there. And Tottenham escaped with a, well, Pretty nice victory. I mean, those are three points that you need, and you got them. And so I think it's time to look at the table in England. Um, and let's look table and the results from yesterday because we, we didn't talk about the results as well. Uh, let me pull up Premier League. Uh, we know, of course, the uh, the big ones. Wolverhampton against Leicester City was a 4-3, uh, 2 nil up at halftime. Uh, I saw the highlights. Uh, it was a really interesting game. Uh, Bournemouth beats West Ham 2-0 uh, without Arnautovic. The saga, I really was so much in favor of Arnautovic. He was really playing great, and then he pulls this shit with uh, China. Sorry about that, but uh, it just makes me angry. You don't go to China. Uh, and not with the R argument to win titles. I'm sorry, you won't win titles unless you win Guangzhou Evergrande. And that's not what you want. Uh, Liverpool Palace 4-3. Manchester United uh, just wins 2-1 against Brighton and Hove Albion. Uh, but they had a 2-0 lead at halftime. But Solskjaer's uh, reign continues. Pogba penalty and Rashford. Gross pulls one back. Uh, Newcastle gets a big win. 3-0 against Cardiff City. We'll see in the table. Southampton beats Everton 2-1. Uh, that's also very important points against relegation, um, with uh, Everton only getting the um, consolation goal in stoppage time. So uh, Southampton and the new trainer, Ralf Hasenhüttl, get something, probably some, something going. Uh, Watford 0-0 against Burnley. Arsenal Chelsea 2-0. Then we said Huddersfield against City. 0-3 and Fulham 1-2. So on top of the table, Liverpool 60, Manchester City 56, Tottenham has now 51. So those three seem pretty secure to me in Champions League, although Tottenham now with the injuries going on might be interesting uh, what's going to happen there. Chelsea is uh, worrying me. I think they really need a good striker. I don't know if the Iguain deal is not done or not. Uh, remains to be seen, but they had 47, Arsenal and Manchester United 44. Big drop. Those are the six teams that will play in Europe next year. Watford is best of the rest of 32. Wolverhampton moves up because they beat uh, neighbor Leicester City. 32. So they have 32. Leicester have 31 points. West Ham has also 31 points. So it's always those here. Everton 30. Bournemouth 30. Then it's another four point drop, I would say. And also the teams, yeah, Brighton and Hove Albion at 26 may not yet play against rele um, relegation, but it starts in a Crystal Palace in 14th spot, 22 points. Southampton moves up, uh, 15th has 22 points. Burnley, only a point, uh, also 22 points is now 16. Uh, Newcastle United, 21 points, moves up ahead of Cardiff City that they beat, who has now 19 points. Um, and Fulham 14 and Huddersfield 11. I still have some hope for Fulham. I mean, I would both Newcastle and Fulham to uh, stay in the league. It will be hard. Um, has to be seen. But that's the table. Huddersfield 11 pretty much doesn't stand a chance, I'm afraid to say. So that's the standings in England. Um, let's also look quickly uh, Germany. Again, I, I didn't see highlights. Bayern, Hoffenheim, 3-1. Uh, uh, Goretzka has two goals and Lewandowski gets one late. Uh, Gladbach wins at Leverkusen, 1-0. Uh, Stuttgart loses a big one against Mainz, 2-3. Two, uh, two, uh, we're 2-0 down at halftime already. Uh, just looking at how it went. Yeah, they were 3-0 down and then they put two back in uh, the last 10 minutes. Uh, Frankfurt is back to winning ways against Sportclub Freiburg, 3-1. 
Um, we have Augsburg, Düsseldorf 1-2, Hannover, uh, Bremen 0-1, um, Leipzig against Erd Dortmund 0-1, uh, so Dortmund stays ahead of Bayern, uh, Nürnberg Hertha 1-3, and Schalke beats Wolfsburg 2-1. So table in Germany, Dortmund 6 points ahead of Bayern, um, 45-39, Gladbach has 36 points and Leipzig 31. So, um, Dortmund and Bayern, that's where it's at. And given that Bayern has a home game against Dortmund and there's always a chance, I'm not calling Dortmund yet. Uh, Frankfurt moves now in fifth uh, with 30 points. Wolfsburg lost, so 28. Hertha moves up 27. Hoffenheim 25. Werder 25. Uh, Leverkusen 24. Mainz 24. And then, yeah. I would say this is where now the again the relegation zone starts at spot 12. Germany is really deep, you you usually usually at the bottom. Um Schalke 21 points, Freiburg 21 points, Düsseldorf 21 points. But those look safe-ish because they still have a seven points from the relegation zone. Augsburg, that's where it really, really starts. 15, Stuttgart 14, Hannover 11, Nuremberg 11. I would hope that Stuttgart and Nuremberg make it. I just don't have much hope. Uh, maybe Stuttgart will make it. I don't see much hope for Nuremberg. Uh, I also did mention yesterday uh, the Paris Saint-Germain. I saw two goals live. Uh, they beat Hammered, going on 9 0 after going down to them in the League Cup. Um, yeah. France, let's go Lille, Amiens 2 1, PSG going on 9 0, Monaco, Strasbourg 1 5. That's a biggie. Uh, Nîmes, Toulouse 0 1, Reims against Nice uh, 1 1, Rennes, Montpellier against Goldless, Angers against Nantes 1 0. I was about almost to watch Caen against Marseille, but then I decided for them Tottenham is more interesting. 0 1, Bordeaux beats Dijon 1 0, and Saint Etienne, Olympique Lyon is not quite done yet here, but it's 1 1. I think that's how it will end. Uh, which means in the table, which is almost straightened out, PSG far ahead, uh, Lille Saint Etienne um, and Olympique Lyon kind of fighting for the Champions League and the European spots. There's also the League Cup winner Strasbourg. This is a really strong season. Very happy to see that actually. Mope is 32 ahead of Montpellier with uh, also 32, but of course Montpellier has a game in hand. Uh, Marseille is also there, 31, Nice 31, Rennes. 30, Bordeaux 28, Reims 28, Nîmes 26, and so on. Let's go to the bottom of the table. I think relegation stone starts at spot 16, Caen 18, Amiens 18, Dijon 17, Monaco 15, Gregor 14. <sighs> yeah, it will be interesting to see whether Monaco can get anything going. Now, the last game I did not really watch, but I heard most of it because I was bringing my daughters to sleep, meaning I have the phone on, uh, headphones and listening was uh, Napoli against Lazio. Napoli wins 2-1, hits the bar four times. There was, uh, it was They were up 2-0 at halftime, then a sneaky goal by um, Immobile at a point when Napoli should have led by a whole lot more. Uh, and it became, it got dramatic, but in the end, Napoli holds on. But we'll talk about Italy more tomorrow, and I probably will watch some highlights and we'll see about that. And that's it for now, as I said. And I also saw Barcelona 1 3 1 uh, against Leganes, so Barcelona stays top two. But again, watching highlights tomorrow, and we'll talk about that uh, all tomorrow when we know a little bit more about the results in Italy. Let me know which games you watched, uh, what you think of the standings as well. If you agree with me with the relegation zones, who are you hoping that we'll get into European competition, we'll get promoted and blah, blah, blah. Relegated, uh, promoted, we didn't talk about that <laughs> at all, but you know who you want to avoid the drop to relegation. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this or any others. I have a lot of Jersey videos too, and I will talk to you soon. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things my soccer universe. And with that, I wanna wish you a wonderful day.